Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports, joined today as always by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we have a full recap of NWSL action for everyone today. A quick reminder to follow us on Twitter at Attacking Third. You can also head on over to our YouTube page and hit subscribe so that you never miss a video interview whenever we go live. Plus, you can catch great extended highlights of NWSL matches. Go to YouTube.com slash Attacking Third and hit subscribe. Lisa, how are you doing today? Ready to get into these? I am ready, Sandra. This regular season is spicy. Uh, the end of the season is even spicier, and I'm pumped for the playoffs to come. But honestly, I'm like really excited for this last week or so of NWSL games because they, they're they just getting better and better and better. How are you? How is your weekend? How's your sh- big old Chicago heart doing? It's, it's bursting. It's, it's at the <laughs> seams. I just... In general, yes, the Chicago Sky are WNBA champions, but just in general, like the energy that's happening right now in like women's professional sports, it's just uh, it's very, very um, infectious in the in the in the best of ways, and it's just like really awesome to just sort of see these type of competitions kind of coming, you know, head going head to head essentially. Like we're gonna get into these NWSL matches, and you and I chat all the time about these games <laughs> off off mic and and whatever and. It's just not that energy is just staying. It's consistent when it comes to NWSL. So it's like, yes, I am absolutely delighted that the Chicago Sky uh, are, you know, champions for the first time in the franchise history. It was great to take in the games personally as a Mm -hmm. local Chicagoan. Um, But watching these NWSL games um, while all of this was going on, it was just like, oh my God, I just, I'm like ready to climb a mountain. It's just like, <laughs> it's like the energy, man. It was just like, so, so great. Um, somebody let's, get this lady a mountain. Let's I, go I'm climbing, I'm climbing <laughs> for you. Watch out. Um, and then like, I think it was, it's also like going, like, as we head into these NWSL matches, it's like week, week to week leading into these, this final stretch here, we had like all these different scenarios coming into play. Right. And things that we're watching for week in and week out during these last final, you know, let's say stretch of six weeks, even it's, it's really been go time for so many of these teams. So even just heading into this weekend's uh, slate of matches, let's talk a little bit about things that were on the line and maybe some things that sort of happened beginning in this weekend, Oil Rain and Portland Thorns had already clinched their playoff spots. Um, Racing Louisville and Kansas City NWSL were eliminated from playoff contention. Mm-hmm. Um, Washington Spirit out of this weekend have clinched a playoff berth. Orlando Pride uh, are officially out of uh, playoff contention with this weekend's slate of games. And Portland Thorns uh, finally clinched that elusive shield. It was kind of running away from them for, for a little bit, but they clinched the shield. They clinch first, and that means that they will absolutely host a semifinal. Um, and it is their second uh, time in club history in which they were able to lift the NWSL shield. And they're just racking them up. I mean, just racking up all kinds of titles in 2021. Um, so so props to them. It's a uh, it was quite the weekend going in uh, for sure. And now exiting this, it's still like that picture is still open, but there's some things that have been been solidified a little bit. It has. And Portland Thorns could have clinched. I think the earliest they could have clinched a playoff spot was the 10th or even before that. Um, but or the shield, excuse me, they could have clinched the shield on the 10th. But as you said, things kind of got away from the Thorns in these last few weeks. And I think OL Rain made an incredible run for that shield. I thought they were coming for the Thorns um, and they did come pretty close. But uh, Portland, they did it. They end up on top. Mark Parsons with this win and this clinch becomes the most winningest coach in NWSL history, which is really a huge accomplishment for him and for the Thorns. I know the players really love him and, and at, at speaking with him, I really enjoy him. Um, and he's leaving the league and the Thorns after this season going to coach internationally um, for the Netherlands. So this, I think like him becoming the winningest coach in NWSL history, um, getting the NWSL shield with Portland Thorns, just 
it's happy. It's happy moments, especially for the Thorns. The happy dances, the crying from those players is just so fun to watch and see. Um, but there were so many moving parts heading into this weekend. We knew a few things, but as the games were happening on Saturday, it was like, okay, now how does this change the yep. playoff scenario? Now what happens? Oh, the golden boot race is happening. Yeah. And this there was like so many different things to watch. I needed like 15 screens. Oh, yeah, we kept preferring... I know we kept referring to it as like NWSL math. We we're like, yes. all right, we got to do like our NWSL math. Like what's the NWSL equation? Like how's it going to be yeah. looking? Like what's it looking like heading into this weekend? And like, what's it looking at like after Saturday? Okay. Like now what's it looking like going into Sunday? What's it looking like now after Sunday? It's just been back and forth and it's just been like really, really exciting um, to sort of take all this in and you know, it, and it's all happening. Of course, we will continue to to keep this this message going as the players have requested. But it's all happening in light of all of the things that have been coming mm -hmm. out in terms of the reporting um, around uh, previous instances of uh, sexual misconduct, um, you know, unequal, uh, unequal treatment, abusive behavior, stuff like that. Um, and the players are doing their demonstrations that has also continued into this weekend's uh, slate of games that we're going to get into. Uh, the demonstrations um, are looking a little different now. They're, it's still pausing for a full minute of solidarity and reflection. But um, instead of happening in the sixth minute, it's now happening at kickoff. So at, at the kickoff, players are coming together in the center circle locking arms in solidarity and continuing their, their demonstrations um, for enough is enough in terms of no more silence. Um, so that is also continuing uh, during these games as well. It, it is continuing and the players are doing it. Um, coaching staff is joining. I've saw, I've seen officials and referees joining in that circle of solidarity. Um, I'm, I'm glad the ripple effect is continuing because this story is, is not over. And I know it made big news headlines and everyone was aware of it. Everyone in the world who doesn't even follow women's soccer um, was aware of it. And I, I want to make sure that everyone continues to be aware of it because the problem has not been fixed yet. We've put a bandaid over the bullet holes of firing these coaches, but there are still things in the league that need to be changed. And that's what these players are standing together for. Um, actually, it was telling someone else about it this weekend. I was like, you don't know this news. You need to be up and yeah. in on it, um, which they were talking to the wrong person because we obviously know everything about <laughs> it. And I was very passionate about sending them links and, and making sure that everyone is informed because um, it's still a fight that the players are fighting and will continue to fight. Yeah. And it's just so, I think it's what makes some of um, these scenarios like a little bit more remarkable, honestly, as, as, as mm -hmm. yes, people who are watching this and viewing it as a soccer game, but people who are also looking at these games, you know, as, as part of our jobs and having to cover them in certain different types of lenses, you know, whether it's like being amazed or having to be critical and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, having to look at these performances still take place in light of everything going on just sort of makes them stand out that much more. Um, and it's why like when we're looking at all these different scenarios and then you're seeing the players go out there and perform and really put, put out, you know, put their hearts out on their sleeves and try to get those results. And it's just, it's very, very telling. You could just sort of see um, everything that they're giving and it, it just all sort of is bleeding together right now. Um, let's take a look at these standings a little bit because even though there's been some uh, positions that have been clinched in terms of uh, the remaining playoff spots, there's essentially now three slots left for the playoff table. And within those three slots, it's like four teams are essentially competing for these final remaining spots. So um, we wanted to do things a little bit differently uh, in our episodes going forward with all of the constant changing of the table with the regular season winding down. And we figured, hey, we're going to be doing a, a few more of these. Let's 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 hit you all up at the top of the podcast so you don't have to hang around if you're not ready to hang around. We're going to hit you with these standings right now. Exiting this weekend's uh, slate of games, the standings are as follows. It's Portland Thorns. They locked up that number one with 43 points. Number two is Oil Rain with 39 points. Washington Spirit in third place with 36 points. Chicago Red Stars in fourth place with 35 points. New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC in fifth place with 32 points. Houston Dash in sixth place with 32 points. On the outside looking in is North Carolina Courage with 32 points. And officially eliminated is Orlando Pride in eighth place with 28 points. Um, 
Racing Louisville FC in ninth place with 20 points, and in 10th place, Kansas City and the Resol with 15 points. So that's how things are shaking out after the games uh, this weekend. And uh, things aren't going to slow down uh, <laughs> by any means, even though there's two weeks left in the regular season to kind of shake things out and iron things out here. Um, there's still going to be more soccer on the horizon. Lisa, there's a FIFA window that's coming into play coming up this week. Uh, the United States women's national team is going to be playing a couple of games and Gotham FC and Kansas city are going to be the only two clubs playing an NWSL fixture during this window. And that's because it's uh it's that re final rescheduled match, I believe. Yes, that's what it is. Um, they only played four matches last Wednesday. Uh, so these are the, the rescheduled other ones between Gotham and Kansas city, and it will be played in Kansas city at legends field. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be, this isn't the preview episode, but oh. there's a team that is clearly playing for something. And there's another team that's been playing spoiler. And those types of matches have been, have been sort of playing themselves out. Very, very uh, exciting. Kansas City, I'm alluding to them as that, that team. They've really enjoyed <laughs> kind of that like spoilery kind of role. And 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 they've been they've been having a, a an impressive run of, uh, of of games to sort of kind of exit, make their exit from the from the 2021 regular season, whereas Gotham FC is obviously in a different position. They've got not just one, but two games in hand compared to all the other clubs, um, sort of when we're looking at the 24 games in front of each club, Gotham is only at 21 games played right now. So they've got three versus the one or two games. Some other clubs have um, as well. So there's, there's a lot to, to get into, believe it or not, we still actually have to recap these games that took place. And we're going to do that for you all very soon. We'll be right back after a quick break. Let's get into the NWSL action. Lisa, we had a triple header on Saturday. Do you have our picks ready? Of course I do. All right. Let's start with this first one. It was Racing Louisville FC versus Orlando Pride. Orlando Pride officially eliminated with this game. Got off to an early start. It was so promising, but end up dropping this game 3-1 on the road to Racing Louisville FC. Lisa, how did we have this one picked up? I had Orlando Pride winning. You actually had a draw, Sandra. So we are both Oof. losers after oh. after this first match. But man, this game, racing Louisville, three goals over Orlando. And uh, the Pride started this goal scoring. That's what I yeah. think was the, the thing that threw me off the most when watching this game because Pride came out hard and fast and strong. Um, it, before that, starting lineups, two new goalkeepers in goal, Katie Lund for Racing Louisville and Aaron McLeod for Orlando. I, I liked that. I liked seeing those keepers in there. Um, but the goal for Orlando, Jody Taylor in the third minute, this play was like picture perfect soccer. Alex Morgan dribbling in the midfield and then splitting the seams of the defenders with her through ball and Jody Taylor splitting a different seam with her run gets in behind Louisville's back line. They made it look very, very, very easy. Um, and uh, looking back at that moment, I thought it was going to be a very different game than it ended up being. Ebony Salmon just oh, on fire, on fire. She gets her sixth six goal of the season for Salmon right before the halftime. So it goes even at halftime heading into the locker rooms between these two squads. Um, what a strike from her right in the stoppage time of this this match. Uh a Amy Turner, defender for Orlando, who was playing against Salmon as Salmon struck this ball. Just no respect. Amy Turner, no <laughs> respect for Ebony Salmon. Because why are you giving her that much space at the top of the 18 when you know she's going to shoot the ball and she can yeah. shoot the ball? So, um, yeah, honestly, no respect. It Turner needed to step to that ball, close down the space because Salmon, just a beautiful strike, upper 90. This was fun. And, and second half, it was all Louisville. They ended up getting a few more goals. Katie McClure got her first NWSL goal. Um, it, it was a little back pass from Ebony Salmon. It was great. And then uh, Ebony Salmon had the assist to Nagasato in the 76, 77, 78th minute. So closer to the end of the game, but um, 
heck of a run for Orlando Pride throughout this season. Um, they, they really did a, a good job. Courtney Peterson had a few opportunities. She could have notched a few away. They Orlando made subs around the hour mark of this match. That changed things for Orlando. They had a few more opportunities, a, a little bit more life brought into them. But ultimately, Racing Louisville taking a page from Kansas City's book and playing spoiler to some teams. And Orlando is now knocked out. Their their season um, will not have a postseason. But I, I think a good run for Orlando throughout this regular season. We saw a lot of different things from the Pride. Yeah, I think I don't think it's unfair to sort of, you know, take that angle, you know, in this match right now, sort of do the post part of the, do the obituary a little bit for for Orlando Pride. It's just yeah. um, you, you have to give them credit. They went on an absolute tear to start this season. Yeah. They were undefeated in their first seven games of the season and then to ultimately stay in it, stay in the mix of the play, the playoff hunt, you know, down to the final what was it? Three weeks of their yeah. season is a huge, vast, vast, vast improvement for this Orlando Pride team. When you consider taking a look at their last two to three seasons, mm-hmm. competing in MWL, where they have just not even been in the conversation at all, and that changed for this team this year in 2021. And it's you know, yes, is it? Um, I'm sure it's discouraging. That's probably putting it politely to to sort of go out. Uh, this this kind of way to uh, you know a, a team that maybe on paper you're looking at was also eliminated a long time ago that you want to go in there and sort of you know set the tone mm-hmm. and, and be assertive and, and come out and get get the win and, and they ended up not not doing that but I mean this is that that the league is built this way the league this year is just built this type of way it's 2021 where it just feels like anything can happen where multiple teams have been in the playoff conversation all year long and even those that aren't we're watching now in this final stretch of game are they they're embracing these teams are embracing the the role of of spoiler and getting out there and ensuring that they end their regular season on a high no matter what position they're in so to see a player like Ebony Salmon for, for race to Louisville have the performance that she put on in this mm-hmm. match is, is huge. I think if you're a racing fan and you're looking at that, you're, you're looking at these things to, to build on into the next season. This is a very young player with what is obviously a very high ceiling and to just sort of get that equalizer and steal all of that momentum from a, a desperate Orlando pride team in the first half, and then to continue to keep it up in the second half by picking up these assists and feeding the teammates. So not just finding the back end of the net, but finding teammates as well. That is a very, very promising player uh, for, for Louisville of the future. If they're looking to continue uh, to build this team, you know, around a, a specific player. And racing Louisville, a, a pretty, young team. I mean, Ebony Salmon, 20 years old, and she's really taken on the role of leader on the pitch, off the pitch um, with a squad in in Louisville that is younger. Um, That's the biggest thing and the biggest takeaway. Like you said, as a Louisville fan, just a soccer fan, Ebony Salmon, keep an eye on her. We we knew it when she stepped into the league early on in this summer um, that she was going to be fun to watch, but I she is just taking this in stride. And yeah, the, I liked our little obituary for Orlando Pride a little bit. And <laughs> Becky Hurley, I mean, I wanted her to like make a playoff run as yeah. this goes college coach for years and then retires and then comes back to the game. It would have been a fun story, but um, maybe next year, Becky we'll and see. Orlando. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep an eye on it for, for sure. It's, there's definitely going to be a lens uh, in that position and what's going to happen there moving forward. But uh, we still got a couple games to get through. Let's get through this second one of the triple header for Saturday. It was Chicago Red Stars versus Kansas City NWSL. Chicago hosting Kansas City in this one, getting the win two mm-hmm. one. And honestly, with the return of own goal for Chicago Red Stars, Chicago Red Stars <laughs> forcing their sixth own goal, uh, forcing a goal and setting another new record. Honestly, for for NWSL for most forced own goals. Uh, getting the goal scoring starting in the half hour mark in the 34th minute came off of a set piece. Tina Davidson taking a strong shot and uh, taking a deflection and going on into net. Kansas City NWSL though responding right back. Massive service from Katie Bowen to Haley Mace. 
to get that very, very quick equalizer. We're talking three minutes later. It was all level, and it was a completely different game going into the second half. And if you're Chicago Red Stars, again, these these teams that are mm-hmm. – really in this playoff push and trying to pick up these points it was we almost sort of felt like there was going to be a little bit of a a spoilery night happening because at this point these two these two games in particular had sort of kicked off um within a half hour of each other so you know you had orlando up you know in one game and you had chicago uh (laughs) you know sort of level with with kansas city in another so like Oh, was the scenario of like, oh, is it going to come down to Chicago and Orlando in the final game of the season? To is there going to be sort of a decision day type of vibe with these two teams? But Chicago and and, and Louisville had had different plans for for this day because the Chicago Red Stars ended up getting the the game winner, sort of uh, falling to uh, Mackenzie Doniak via uh, Khalil Watt on the assist. So getting the win, Chicago yeah. Red Stars, it ensured that they were not going to fall out of playoff position. For this weekend. Yes. I, I, that's one of the craziest things about this season is so many of these teams don't even hold the fate of their own lives and their own season in their hands. It's up to other teams because the standings are so close. Yes, they need to win, but it's also like – if Chicago wins and Houston loses yeah. or something else happens, um, the, the scenarios for the playoffs are just – insane and that's what makes it so fun so sandra we both had chicago winning this one so one point for each of us we win um but i was was nervous for a second i was like oh no we both started off really badly (laughs) don't worry don't worry we both had chicago on this one um no own goals we didn't predict that one which i'm not surprised we saw the return of own goal that's that's really what got chicago through the middle of the season and it would only be fitting that own goal makes a return just so fun that it it happens and you have to give so much credit for the scrums that happened in front of the box and that's why these own goals happen because they put pressure on their opponents and they force them to make mistakes and that's exactly what an own goal is a defensive mistake that happens because of offensive pressure um and every single own goal that chicago has had is because of that it's not just like a weird fluke hit off the shin guard that sends the ball into the net um but this this game was really fun to watch kaylee watt is just a beast um sandra do you like watt playing the center striker a, a nine or more on the flanks what do you prefer for her you know what she has been so um Watt has been so active on on the wings for Chicago, right? But she has found a lot of success in that nine role. Mm -hmm. And we actually started to see that locally um, during the fall series, like going back into Kalia Watts, what would have been her like first regular season with the Chicago Red Stars, but ended up just being a challenge cup in a fall series. We really started to see some of that kind of come into play. Um, And, Kalia Watt is this type of player that has shown post her, you know, ACL back in, you know, those, those many years ago, I think it was 2016 or 17, but um, after her recovery from that and sort of getting back into form, what we're starting to see is this sort of relentlessness out of this type yeah. of player. Um, But the goals weren't there. Right. But what we started to see now in this final stretch of the season, as we're seeing the assists, And we're seeing the goals. So uh, the real question here is, are we seeing that because she got is, is being pushed into more of that nine role versus Mm -hmm. being forced to kind of play, you know, out on the wing. Um, That's maybe something to, to narrow uh, the lens in on a little bit more to sort of see where the Chicago teens uh, ends up. And at the end of their season, if that was really where they found um, the success there. Uh, But uh, Mallory Pugh, and Kalia Watt are just, they're kind of showing, I think, a lot of people that um, the NWSL regular season really is a grind. Yeah. And um, sometimes it really is just about getting the time together. Um, because these two players are showing that, like, with, the, with more time, that their movement and their playing off of each other is starting to pay dividends. So we're, And staying healthy. And staying yeah. healthy, which has it's been a huge. struggle for these two. It's huge and it's huge. And it's it's part of a reason why they they have said on record why they feel like Chicago is a good place for them to be in terms of this point in their careers and the continuation of their uh, development. So the fact that these two players sort of have 
similar backgrounds in that sense where they're just sort of like having to have had struggles with injuries in the mm -hmm. past and then have kind of both come to this place together. And this is one specific club. And now we're starting to see in this playoff push, these very impressive games from them, whether it's, you know, individually or collectively, you know, within, within these games, although this, this Kansas city game, like I said, at one point, it was almost like neither team really wanted to take a hold of it, you know, and then they both got goals in the same time. And it was just like, well, who's going to get another one if they get another one. But, um, on a cold night in Chicago with the way uh, uh, the Red Stars. So big points for them with a game remaining for sure. Uh, and, but Kansas and, City not making it easy by any means for anybody. No, and and for Chicago, two goals coming off of, uh, well, corner kicks for the first one and then for Kansas yeah. City off of a corner kick too, which has yeah. been really the name of the game for Chicago throughout this season. They, they get goals off corner kicks and they capitalize on those set-piece moments, which not a lot of teams can do. Uh, but then to, to turn around and not be able to defend it cleanly yeah. is um, rough. It's a bit, of, it's like a taste of your own medicine. Kansas city gave Chicago, yeah. which is kind of fun to see that, that Kansas city can dish it out as well. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm loving it. It's, it's fun watching the teams who got nothing to lose compete in these type of moments. Mm -hmm. and, and Kansas city is, is a team to, to watch out for on, on the final two weeks here. Let's get into this final game of the triple header on Saturday. It was all rain versus Washington spirit, Washington spirit running away with the result in this one, two zero over one of the most top form teams in the league right now. But Washington spirit pumped the brakes and they said, hold on. You mean us, Sandra. You mean Washington Spirit. We're the hottest team in the league right now. Picking up another win. Getting up all these results. Washington Spirit, 2-0. Goals for, from uh, Taylor Elmer and Ashley Hatch. Bangers. This was billed as the meeting of two of the top golden boot contenders in Ashley Hatch and Bethany Balser. Bethany Balser breaking the deadlock there. It was a three-way tie at one point. But no longer sitting at the top right now with 10 goals. Ashley Hatch, yes, at the top, golden boot, 10 goals for her. This game, um, this was a fun one. I was a little nervous at first. We got the injury reports for Washington Spirit. Andy Sullivan listed as questionable heading into this match. And sometimes questionable doesn't really mean much when it comes to game time. Courtney Peterson questionable for Orlando. We saw good minutes out of her and good play out of her. Andy Sullivan questionable and not on the roster for the, this match. She didn't get the start. She wasn't on the substitute list. Um, so maybe that has to do with the FIFA window coming up, maybe really injured, not quite sure the full st story there. But because of that, Taylor Almer gets the start for Washington Spirit. She slides into that midfield unit um, and uh, it, it pays off. Chris Ward's got to be pretty happy with himself there because Almer gets the goal. Uh, this this is huge. Um, yeah, her first, first NWSL uh, start. First NWSL goal. A first NWSL start. First NWSL goal. Um, yeah, Andy Sullivan who? I'm just kidding. Andy <laughs> Sullivan, you're fantastic. <laughs> but it, it, it's true. You, you look at things like that, and that's a player that knows how to take advantage of the opportunity that she's given and prove that she deserves to be on the field. I, I really liked the play from Almer. She was all over the pitch. She, she did a nice job in the midfield, breaking up plays defensively. Um, it, this goal was also pretty great too. Um, Trini Rodman is just doing a great job. Yeah. Great job this season. Uh, this, this was great. It, it, Cross comes in for Washington. It bounces around the box and Almer gets a nice little volley. Just She kind of just redirects this ball back towards the back post, but it's a, a looping volley and and gets in behind O.L. Reign. Um, but Trinity Rodman, just fan-fantastic. Um, I think this pissed off O.L. Reign, the fact that Washington Spirit could play this well against yeah. them. It, they yeah. looked a little pissed off, which was... On great. their turf, man. They were... Yeah, playing it's, angry a little bit. It's fun to watch a team that's pissed off because they want to win. They deserve to win with players like um, Fishlock and and Rapino, Rose Lavelle, uh, Liz Holmer. They're doing of, uh, all the things right. It a lot of a uh, like, lot of yellows in this one. Like it was just like a, a lot of yellows. Like, it just sort of felt like, and I hate to do this, but I'm gonna because it's where we are right now, Lisa but it just sort of felt like a little bit of a playoff preview possibly it just it just felt that way 
watching these two teams uh, go go head to head. But it wasn't. It, it was just a regular season <laughs> picture. Washington Spirit doing their job and picking up all three points and getting the two goals. And it's just it's just again, it's just like another match that has these certain moments happening within it. That is just, I think, just another testament to like yeah. this season and what it is and what it means. I mean, we're this late into the season where teams are still competing for playoff spots with two weeks remaining, where a player like uh, Taylor Elmer can come on and score her first NWSL professional goal. Yeah. Like that could still happen in, yeah. in this late in the season. Yes. Whereas like, you know, a lot of times – many clubs in the past competing in this time of the year are like their starting lineups are set, you know, like this is who they're rolling with. These are the players that you probably are going to be used to seeing, you know, heading into these type of match day scenarios. So it's just, I, again, I think it's just another one of these things that we can point to and say like this, this is what this 21 season is, is about here. Yes. And, and when you looked at the stats for this match, OL rain had 24 crosses, Washington had nine throughout this game. So O.L. Reign just pissed off and upset throughout this game. They wanted to win. So 22nd goal, Washington gets on the board first. And then at right around the hour mark is when Ashley Hatch scores just a banger of a goal. Her 10th goal of the season takes her into first place for the Golden Boot Race. Um, this shot was from distance for Hatch, which we know she can do, but we haven't seen it that much because she's been getting herself in and around the six-yard box to finish a lot of her goals or they're on breakaways. And this was an opportunity for Hatch to say um, – um, I can do it. I can make those runs in behind and I can be quick and do s little slotted passes past opposing teams, goalkeepers. I can also be in the right place at the right time and, and get on the end of crosses, or I can also just rip a banger from the top of the 18. Like, heck yeah, Ashley Hatch. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and Washington actually, they almost had a third goal. Uh, huge kudos oh, to man. Jess Fishlock. This is what I mean when I say that. Yeah. Noel Rain was pissed off. This was Jess Fishlock sprinting back yeah. as Washington is a man up opportunity. Sanchez, I believe, Ashley Sanchez picks off the ball in the midfield, finds Rodman, who almost scored this one. It gets past uh, Buadi, goalkeeper for OL Rain. And here comes Jess Fishlock sliding in to save this ball about three inches away from being a goal. This was this was it. And and OL Rain, they were knocking on the door throughout this match. They they had good shots, good opportunities. Aubrey Bledsoe had a, a really good game um, and a lot of yellow cards, like you said, Sandra. And I think Trinity Rodman got her fourth, which is fine for now, but dangerous because yeah. Washington plays on the 31st, I believe, Halloween. And if she gets her fifth yellow card, she will be out for the first round of the playoffs, which is a big loss for Washington. So she's got to be careful. It's a and dangerous it's, scenario, yeah. It is a very, very dangerous scenario. And if you are Houston Dash and you know you're playing against Washington – uh, yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to pick on <laughs> Trinity Rodman because she's a younger – hot-headed player that can get feisty during these matches and, and force her to get that yellow card. That's where I'm thinking. I'm already at these games that these teams are playing in their head I'm because sure you know they you. are. I'm sure it's not just you. I'm, I'm sure in, in, in the in the film rooms this week, oh, yeah. those, are, those are things that are going to be looked at uh, for sure because that's the other thing about this this type of stuff is that with these final few games remaining, it's, a, it's against teams that are going head-to-head and these can be potential playoff matchups as well that we're seeing, you know, so these are all things I'm sure that they're, they're going to be uh, taking a look at, but yeah, huge, huge points for Washington spirit. Uh, another big, big result for them. Uh, four matches in 10 days, picking up results left and right. Uh, the spirit absolutely going on a complete tear. Uh, consider all things considered uh, while we're talking about, uh, things happening off the pitch, uh, potentially impacting clubs and their play. Uh, the spirit look to sort of be re-energized as they're out there sort of competing uh, for each other for these results. So uh, very, very impressive. And uh, like you said, I think maybe one of those games that will stick with the rain uh, for, for a little bit as well, Lisa. Let's get into... Uh, let's get into Sunday's matches. Mm -hmm. We had a doubleheader. Let's get into these two games. 
They were delightful. First up, North Carolina Courage versus New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC. Welcome back to the show, <laughs> Gotham FC. We missed you. And boy, did you put one on. 3-0. They went on the road to carry North Carolina and ended up defeating North Carolina Courage in their house with three goals. And honestly, Lisa, we're gonna get we're gonna get into this this game a little bit. I think we might be taking a little bit of a deeper dive here, but uh, really, this uh, sort of twelve to fourteen minute window in the second half in which Gotham FC just ultimately took over. You know, uh, we're we're talking a lot about this this Gotham FC side in that. Uh, there are many who feel that they're sort of primed to make a real late playoff push right now. And a mm -hmm. huge part of that isn't, yes, it's because they have a, a impressive team with lots of talent on it and top to bottom offense to defense, all kinds of, of great talent and all sorts of great positions. But it's also because they've got more games in hand. Let's just be real. <laughs> they have more of an opportunity to make this type of push, right? And so we're we're all keeping an eye on Gotham FC. And here they go up against a team in North Carolina that are all of a sudden playing for their playoff lives and uh, get handed this huge, huge loss. But but those goals not coming until that that second half, Lisa. And really, for credit to to the courage looking like they were trying to ensure their own playoff destiny as well, but it just didn't happen on this day. Yes. Um, I think the name of the game and the funniest joke the last few weeks has been that Gotham has just how many games in hand? So many. At this point, it's two. It, we will lessen by the by Friday. Um, but picks, I picked uh, a draw for this one. You had Gotham winning in our last mass match, Washington and rain. You had OL rain winning. I had Washington. So we're even right now with our picks, but um, welcome back Gotham. I think you said it best, Sandra, really welcome. Welcome back Gotham. This uh, I'm not surprised at all that they're back. I think having uh, Mitch purse back and, and playing, she was out for a bit with injury and that hurt them. And, and a lot of pressure was put on Anamanu and she rose to the occasion. And now that she has the opportunity to share some of that pressure with players like purse and Lloyd and, and Paige Monahan, even being back and getting minutes um, it helps Midge Purse, she gets a brace in this match. She now has eight goals on the season, and Carly Lloyd gets a mat, gets a goal uh, for Gotham, which I think was really fitting for for Lloyd because um, at her retirement and everything, all the hoopla that's surrounding that. It's nice to see that. So this takes Gotham to five games in their unbeaten streak. Um, which is just crazy. And they have one more heading into this FIFA window. Uh, Mandy Freeman, we saw her come back from injury and get some time in this match, which was a pretty big deal. Uh, but but looking at the North Carolina side, Aline Williams, Ugh. the goal, the goal, there's a, there's a crossbar and there's posts on yeah. the side. You got to hit the back of the net, Lynn. You can do this. I, I don't know what's up. I don't know what's happening with Lynn. Maybe these back-to-back -back games are a little tough for her. Uh, she missed some some wide open goals, Lynn Williams in this match. And that's got to hurt, uh, especially when the courage is fighting for a playoff position, but um, the, man, Lynn Williams, so close on a few of these and, and just not able to connect and not able to find the back of the net. I think we saw a different play from Dabinia than we have seen in the last few weeks. And since, yeah. since the Olympics, really Dabinia has been off a little bit. She hasn't really been the glue in the midfield for the courage that they need. Um, but she had a really good game against Gotham. Um, uh, just being really the puppeteer in the middle of the field, picking off passes, finding great through balls, uh, ripping really nice shots from distance and, and testing goalkeepers. Um, she, she tried to chip Kaylin Sheridan at one point. Those smart plays, those heads up plays from Dabinia were back, but it really wasn't enough against this Gotham squad that came out, especially in the second half and put their shots away, put their, their opportunities away and, and, this is what Gotham needed. They really needed this win for the confidence level that they have, and especially heading into the final three games that they have of the season. I'm in a complete agreement with you. I just, there's something about this, this Gotham uh, side right now where it's just, I think we're just sort of waiting, right, for, for the moment. It almost sort of feels very poetic, this arc that they're about to, to go on. Um, but, 
for the current side, I, I don't know if I want to use the word uh, poetic uh, just because mm -hmm. with everything that's been going on, it's evident that maybe there will be some teams that uh, don't respond well to that. And I don't think it's uh, f fair to, to sort of talk about this game in, in light of everything going on yeah. and say, you know, this is maybe the team that is perhaps, you know, feeling the, the pressures of the things that are happening off the pitch. Um, and, you know, perhaps a player like, like Lynn Williams will maybe benefit from some time away from, from club. Yes. While she goes off to play for, for country. Um, I think of somebody uh, like, like an Andy Sullivan who, who went on record during the September matches with mm -hmm. the United States women's national team and, and mentioned how it sort of felt like a bit of relief to have the camp, the national team camp and uh, have a place where she could just, you know, feel supported and, and focus on soccer and, and be with friends and teammates. Um, uh, and to sort of, you know, hear a player speak like that in light of all the things that were going on with the spirit, um, you know, perhaps maybe that will be something that would be beneficial for, for a player like, like Williams, who just, you know, just uh, is looking like getting the, the right looks and, and getting the shots off, but it just isn't finding the back of the net right now. So perhaps maybe that will be beneficial for, for her and by extension, the courage, uh, you know, if she makes a return and maybe is a little bit, um, you know, a little bit refreshed uh, in, in that sense. Uh, so we'll see. Um, Gotham coming out of this one, uh, uh, the victors, and, and, and looking very, very impressive. Um, Margaret Purse, the attacker. You'll love to see it. Let's get into this next one. The final one of the matches. We've got Houston Dash versus Portland Thorns FC. Eyes on this one for the shield, the elusive shield, the shield that just didn't want to be won by anyone for a couple <laughs> weeks here. Um, and, and all of a sudden that, that got, uh, that also got, got put to rest. Uh, Portland Thorns on the road, Houston Dash defeating them 1-0 and clinching the 2021 NWSL Shield in tow. It is just, we, we talked about it at the top of this, uh, this podcast, Lisa, and we got to talk about it again. This Thorn team is just showing us who we thought they were, quite frankly. Uh, 2021 had a number of titles for any team in front of them, uh, for the Thorns specifically. It was about four, with if you were including the, the women's ICC title that they took as well. Um, and now this is three of potentially four that they can rack up in the 2021 season. And uh, I think if you ask them, they are right on task <laughs> for what they wanted to accomplish this year and getting it done in a place like Houston, where it's not easy to play, but, uh, with these two teams in particular, they have had sort of, a a very interesting recent rivalry. We'll just refer to mm -hmm. it. It's been budding, you know, maybe over the last uh, year or so coming out of that 2020 challenge cup. But uh, the, I think the bi a big takeaway for a lot of people is this, this goal from, from Lindsay Horan, who's also who's yeah. looking like she's getting back into form, which is a player for the thorns that they probably want her getting into form during this final stretch of, of season and, and more and the assistant, the assisted goal from, from Morgan Weaver, uh, the second year player who is also just mm -hmm. really shown. We're talking about players who just sort of get out there and look relentless. Morgan Weaver is one of these players. She's a player that's showing that whether you start her or you bring her off the bench, she is going to run after it no matter what. Um, so it just was enough. It's just all they needed in this one. They said it was just the one goal, the narrow win. What happened with the picks in this one? What, what were we, what were we looking at? Lisa? Oh, we both lost. I had uh, Houston and you had a draw. Okay. Remember you started and you ended with a draw. So um, you, you and it. I end even, but I'm, I'm really happy for Portland on this one. Uh, Mark Parsons becoming the most winning coach in NWSL history, huge for him. Um, and, and like you mentioned, Morgan Weaver, a player that she's had ups and downs throughout this regular season with the Portland Thorns, um, never dipping so low that, uh, uh she was out of contention or out of, uh, the, the substitute list or the lineup at all by any means from Mark Parsons, but, um, she had bad moments and then she had really great moments in these last few weeks. She has been getting better and better and better. Um, De dealt with a bit of an injury there for a little bit. Um, but the assist on this goal was really good from Weaver. And and even to start this game, Weaver almost had a goal. It was incredible. Sophia Smith had a few off the posts uh, the first half. Um, but Lindsay Horan, I'm glad she got the goal. I think I said it in the preview or maybe our last Portland recap that she's a player that has been 
stepping up and she's been getting better and she's not plateauing at this point in her career where she has been a stud. She's continuing to use these opportunities to get better as a player on the field. Um, but the, the goal was really fun across from Smith into the box. It ends up at Weaver's feet who has one too many players around her. So she lays it off to the top of the 18 yard box and it's Lindsay Horan and, and Quika both near where the ball ends up and Horan just calls Quika off of it, slices this ball and, and snaps it towards the back of the net. It was a really, really nice one-time shot from Lindsay Horan. Um, Bella Bigsby also had a really nice night uh, for the Portland Thorns because Houston wasn't uh, – they weren't walking away with um, nope. this loss easily. They they wanted to win. Rachel Daly had a few opportunities um, off the post. Uh, Bella Bigsby made some great saves. Christy Mewis had a fantastic game getting herself into pockets, uh, finding the ball, getting on the end of crosses that were happening. I think Michelle Prince had a really nice game. She's a very fun player to watch. But this rivalry, like you said, the Portland-Houston rivalry, it's a good one. It's a good one. But uh, at Portland coming out on top uh, to end our weekend of fun matches. 2021 NWSL Shield winners. Portland Thorns, it's it, – listen, we're going to be back soon for everybody and we're going to have to go through some more scenarios for everyone but these were fun to get through through this weekend to finally have some small things set in place first place shield winner another team clinching another team getting eliminated and we will see what the following week provides us all i want to thank everybody for listening follow us on twitter at attacking third we're on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your podcast show. If you leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts with a question, Lisa and I will answer it as part of our mailbag segment. We're also available as video, so please subscribe to us on YouTube. Visit youtube.com slash attacking third. Lisa and I will be back Wednesday with the United States Women's National Team preview versus South Korea. We will do live recaps for all the United States Women's National Team matches, the Carly Lloyd farewell matches. So come on back Thursday night, post game with us. You will get a live post game reaction. And uh, we always love to do that with you all and spend time talking about these, uh, these matches with you guys. So for Sandra Herrera and Lisa Roman, this was Attacking Third. <laughs>